Hello, in this episode, we're gonna be talking about venting your plumbing system. Now, plumbing, it has to breathe. If it doesn't breathe, your sinks are gonna gurgle, uh, toilets are gonna to bubble, and your tubs and stuff they just aren't gonna drain right, or they're gonna make a whole lot of noise. Um, when I first got started plumbing, this is how it was explained to me, and we've all done this as kids, where you've got your, your drink and your straw, and you stick the straw down in there, and put your finger over the top of it, and when you pick it up, it holds that column of water in the straw until you release your finger or vent it. And that's the basic principle behind it. Now, on the small scale, you're dealing with surface tension and things like that, and pretty much that water's gonna stay in that straw until you release your finger. Now, on a larger scale, such as this two inch pipe, you could do it, but eventually a little trail of air is gonna find its way up and break that seal, and it's gonna fall out. So it's pretty much just gonna slow it down. Um, now, we pretty much use two different types of vents in residential construction and I'm going to go over the difference between those but before I do that I'm going to tell you a little bit about pressures. Now we've got this roughed in here and this is for a double lavatory so just imagine our sink is sitting here and uh, we've got it full to the top with water and we pop that little drain and that water comes down this pipe. Now as it's moving through this pipe uh, it's created a column of water and it's, it's moving forward. On the front side of, of that column of water, you're going to have what we call positive pressure or just pressure. Um, on the back end of it, now that column is moving through this pipe, so it's traveling along. On the back side of that, you're going to build up a, a negative pressure and we call that vacuum. Uh, so that's why you have to vent it to take care of those pressure issues. So pretty much for us, there's two different ways to vent. There's the good old fashioned passive vent through the roof like this, which most plumbers prefer. Uh, and I think this is probably the best way to do it um, because going through the roof, you're handling that positive pressure as it comes along. It can blow out the top of that vent. And then once that column of water makes its little turn here and starts heading in the other direction, uh, it can suck air back in. So it's handling both the positive pressure and the negative pressure. Now, the other option we have is what we call an air admittance valve. Now, a lot of people have brand named this and they call it a Studer vent. Uh, and basically, it's got like a little flapper in there. Now, this is only going to handle that vacuum, that negative pressure because this is designed to go inside the house, in a cabinet. You can't put it in a wall because this has to be uh, serviceable. So uh, to control sewer odors and stuff, it will not let air come out of it. So that positive pressure, it's gonna slam shut, but when you have vacuum, it's gonna pull that valve open and let air in, and you can hear them go open up and stuff when you're running uh, water down a sink. We use these a lot on kitchen sinks, the island sinks. We can't, we don't have any way to vent up, but we try not to use these anywhere else other than where we have to. We, we prefer to do it this way. Um, that's the basics behind it. Um, I'm going to show you this little diagram and we're going to go over it real quick. Vents can't exit the ridge or within five feet of the ridge. Now the ridge is the top crest of that roof, the top, very top part of the house. Uh, the reason behind that is pretty much nowadays all uh, ridges have a ridge vent, so it's open to the air. Uh, you do not want the sewer gas to go into that attic or go into your house at all. It smells and there could be an explosion hazard or fire hazard, however, uh, that is very rare. Um, the other thing here is stay away from your soffit, which is the bottom edge of the roof. Uh, all those soffits are vented as well. You got to keep that attic cool and keep the air moving around. So you want to stay, stay out of the soffit and stay three feet uh, above it or three feet away from it. 
Um, the next thing here, now this is just for us. We paint all of our vents black. Uh, it just looks better. Uh, a lot of plumbers don't do that and you've got a nasty looking white pipe with numbers and stuff all over it poking out of your house. It looks better painted black, so paint them black. Uh, the next thing is you want to stay 10 feet. Now this is horizontally 10 feet away from any window or opening. Now if you're above it, uh, it it's three feet. You want to be over three feet if you're above the window or the opening. Um, now we do not like using our vents as drains. There is such a thing called a wet vent, uh, but we prefer not to get into that and just your vents are vents and your drains are drains. Uh, your vent must fall back toward your fixture or toward down toward your sewer line because uh, vents will condensate because of steam and hot water in your shower and stuff like that. And if it rains really, really hard, rainwater will go down your vent and it needs a place to go. You don't want any bellies in your vent and you don't want your vents running the other direction because they will fill up with condensate and rainwater and they will stop working. So make sure it falls back toward your fixture. Now this next part is a little bit of the code stuff. Um, your vent is going to start where it breaks into the mainline pipe, something that is already vented. And that's how you calculate your distance here. It's where it breaks. It's not the full run back up to the top of the house. So uh, on your lavatories and tub showers, you want to be no more than eight feet. So less than eight feet is perfectly fine. And that's from where it breaks that pipe. Um, now you want a quarter to an eighth of an inch fall uh, on your drain lines. Uh, and the rule for your toilet is a little different. It's 10 feet. You want to break that vent or vent it every 10 feet whenever you're dealing with a toilet. And that is also a quarter inch fall per foot. Some people call it a quarter bubble. All right, well, that's the basic gist of it. Vents are there to deal with those pressures, that positive pressure or that negative pressure that we like to call vacuum. Um, you have to have vents so your plumbing can breathe. Remember, we don't want things bubbling or gurgling or making a whole lot of noise. So that's what the vents are for. You'll learn more about them as you're out there in the field putting this stuff together. Thanks, guys.